All right, students, let's take some time to write some notes about the types of reactions and their driving forces. Because this is video notes, feel free to pause at any moment if you need to take some extra time to write something down. Let's get started with the essential question. This should be written at the top of your page. What are the types of reactions and their driving forces? We're gonna explore these five types of chemical reactions. The first one is called a composition reaction, also known as a synthesis reaction in many textbooks and online. Decomposition reactions, single replacement reactions, double replacement reactions, and combustion reactions. I wanna make a recommendation. Pull out your periodic table and look at the back of it. You're gonna see these different reaction types in the back and this will be really useful. I might glance at this as we go through the different types of reactions because you don't need to memorize them. They're on the back of your periodic table. You just need to know how to use them. So let's get going with each type. I would recommend writing down what the reaction basically generally does and then I'm going to give you two examples. I would write one of the examples down in your notebook. Our first one is composition or synthesis reactions. If you look here we have two reactants. We have a yellow reactant and a blue reactant, and those reactants combine after a chemical reaction to form one product. So here we have yellow plus blue makes one green giant product. Let's take a look at two examples. So here we have iron, it's one of our reactants, and then oxygen, it's our other reactant. Now these two come together to make iron two oxide, which is one single product. So this is a composition or a synthesis reaction. Now the second one's a little bit more complicated, but there's something we need to learn from it. Here we have calcium oxide, it's our first reactant, and then we have water, which is our second reactant. Now notice we're not just taking calcium oxide and setting it right next to water. All of these molecules rearrange and form a brand new product called, and this is calcium hydroxide. And this is true for all types of reactions. We're not just taking two things and setting them next to each other, we are rearranging them. All right, the second type of reaction is called a decomposition reaction. Now, the great thing about this one is it's just the opposite of a composition reaction. Take a look. We start with one reactant. That's all we have. This one reactant breaks apart to form two products. So let's take a look at a couple of examples. Our first one is we have potassium carbonate. Now, potassium carbonate breaks apart into potassium oxide and carbon dioxide. Again, we're not just splitting it down the middle. It's not potassium and carbon dioxide. They rearrange themselves to form potassium oxide and carbon dioxide. The next one is mercury oxide. This one's a little bit simple, and it looks like it just splits down the middle, but they do rearrange a little bit. So we have mercury oxide breaks apart into mercury and oxygen. All right, our third example is called a single replacement reaction. Now to remember this one, I like to think of a dance. Here we have a reactant where two things, two substances are dancing with each other. So these two squares, blue and green squares. This is an ionic compound, so it's a positive and negatively charged squares. And then we have a single element right here, this purple circle. This is a single element. Now this single element is the wallflower and it really wants to dance. Now, depending on if it's charged, if it's negatively charged or positively charged, it's gonna go ask one of the two squares to go dance with it. And so this is called a single replacement reaction because the purple circle is going to either replace the green or the blue squares. And so a single element is going to replace a similarly charged element in a compound. So let's take a couple of examples and, and take a look at a couple of examples. Here, our first example is aluminum. So aluminum is our single element. And then it sees that iron, iron two and nitrate, so iron two nitrate are dancing together. So aluminum wants to go and replace iron because aluminum and iron are both metals. So they're gonna replace each other. And so aluminum is gonna go dance with nitrate and iron's gonna go be by itself. Our second example is sodium iodide and fluorine. Notice that fluorine, our single element, is the second thing in the, in the, in the reactants. That's okay, it doesn't matter if it's in the beginning like aluminum or in the end like, like fluorine. But same thing, so fluorine sees sodium. So fluorine is typically negatively charged, so it wants to go and dance with sodium, which is positively charged, and then iodine is gonna go by itself. This, these are each single replacement reactions. All right, the next one is double replacement reactions. This is where ions, it's kind of like a single replacement reaction. So think of a dance again, but this time we have two partners. There's nobody who's dancing, who's by themselves. So we have A and B, which are by themselves, and then C and D, I'm sorry, A and B, which are dancing, and C and D, which are dancing. And they're gonna just change partners up. A is gonna go with D and C is gonna go with B. So let's take a look at a couple of examples. These seem really complicated, but if you take a look, they're not too bad. Our first example is lead to nitrate. So lead and nitrate are dancing together. And then it's potassium iodide is our other set of partners. So lead is gonna go dance with iodine. 
because lead is positive and iodine is negative. And then potassium is going to go dance with nitrate because potassium is positive and nitrate is negative. They just switch their partners up. Here's our second example. Iron 2 sulfide and hydrochloric acid. Iron is going to go dance with chlorine and hydrogen is going to go dance with sulfur. These are each double replacement reactions where two sets of partners switch their partners up. All right, the last type of reaction is called a combustion reaction. Now, this one's a little bit more straightforward. There's not a lot of different ways you can interpret this. Really, we just have a fuel. Um, here we have a, a fuel is known as a carbohydrate, hydrate, which is just a bunch of carbons and hydrogens mixed together. Now, sometimes there's oxygens in there as well, but you'll see some examples soon. Now, in order to light a fuel on fire, you need to have some oxygen. So we have oxygen as one of our reactants as well. That's never gonna change. This, these products are always the same in a combustion reaction. And this is a great hint to let you know that you're looking at a combustion reaction. Carbon dioxide and water are two products of a combustion reaction. All right, so let's take a few, let's take a look at these different example problems and see if we can practice. See if you can pause this video right now and see if you can recognize which type of reaction each of these are. I'll go through them after you pause the video. Did you pause? I sure hope so. Let's go ahead and try the first one. All right, we have potassium hydroxide, which makes potassium oxide and water. That is a decomposition reaction because we have one reactant only and it makes two products. All right, next we have chlorine and potassium bromide makes potassium chloride and bromine. That one is a single replacement reaction. You see chlorines are single element and it replaces bromine over here. So that's a single replacement reaction. All right, the third one, sodium and oxide, sodium and oxygen makes sodium oxide. All right, in this reaction, this one is a composition reaction. So this composition reaction, because we have, because we have two reactants that form one product. All right, the next one is sodium hydroxide and hydrochloric acid makes sodium chloride and water. This one is a double replacement reaction. Sodium goes in with chlorine and then hydrogen goes with hydroxide to make water. This is a double replacement reaction. And you probably guessed the last one by now, but it's a combustion reaction. Here's our hydrocarbon, here's our fuel, just a bunch of carbons and hydrogens together. Those mix with oxygen in the air so they can burn and combust and they always make carbon dioxide and water. All right, before we end our notes, we need to talk about the driving forces. Now, what are driving forces? Two compounds will react if there's at least one of these driving forces present. So these drive the reaction. If you see that a reaction forms a solid or wants to form a solid, also known as a precipitate, then that is a driving force of the reaction. If a reaction wants to form water as a product, that's also driving force. If a reaction wants to form or will form a gas, that's also driving force. And then finally, transferring electrons. If electrons are transferred, if elements that were once charged either become not charged or become charged if they weren't charged before, that's a transfer of electrons. And we'll see some example of these as we do the practice problems. Please note that the driving forces are different than evidence of chemical change. A driving force is something we see in a written formula that, know, that lets us know that a reaction will take place, right? For example, if you were to mix sugar and salt together, we know that that's not gonna cause a reaction because none of these driving forces are present. You can write a chemical reaction between sugar and salt, but if you look at the actual formulas themselves, they're not gonna form a solid water, gas, or transfer electrons. The other list over here we've learned before are evidence of chemical change. These are things that you see physically when you're doing a reaction to let you know that a chemical change is play taking place. Some of them are similar, like for example, formation of a precipitate if it forms a solid, or if we see that there is an emission of a gas. So some of them are the same between both, but they mean different things. Driving force is something you see in a written formula. Evidences of chemical change is something you see in an actual reaction. All right, that's the end of notes, guys. Good luck.